spill for Sparky Channel. I'd like to announce that Sparky Channel will be at the 2022 Ideal National Championship in Tampa, Florida to film the exciting events that will be happening there. I'm very excited to be covering these events and also to be visiting the beautiful city of Tampa. The championships will be held November 4th through the 6th at the Tampa Convention Center. There will be $600,000 in cash and prizes given out. This will be the fourth championships that I have covered for Sparky Channel. Many professional and apprentice electricians are currently competing in qualifying rounds that will determine who gets to come to the championships. Best wishes to all of the competitors. Of course, I have no idea what the professional and apprentice competitions will be this year. However, because I have seen all of the competitions of the last three years, I do have an idea of what electrical fundamentals that it would be wise to study up on or brush up on as necessary. One area would be EMT conduit bending. Here's a clip from the 2019 championships showing Greg and Nick are in action bending EMT conduit. Greg won first place overall that year. I'll put a link in my video description for a playlist that has 36 Sparky Channel EMT bending videos in it, including this one. Greg is making four point saddle bends right here. Another area to be sure that you have mastered is general electrical wiring. One task that has been asked of competitors in every year that I've watched is wiring three-way switches. I'll put a link in my video description to a Sparky Channel electrical wiring playlist, which has 118 videos in it. This playlist includes a three-way switching video, which currently has 3.1 million views. I also have videos on four-way switching circuits. I think it's a good idea to be ready to be able to wire four-way switch systems as well. Contestants would also be wise to brush up on installing and wiring electrical panels. One area of interest that came up last year was about invertible load centers. Knowledge of invertibility of panels can give contestants an advantage in ease and speed of panel installation. I have a video on invertible electrical panels and I'll put up a link for it in my video description. Neither way is actually upside down because it's made to be installed either way. I'll show you some features of this invertible load center. First of all, it's listed by the manufacturer as being invertible. On this document found on the Siemens website, it states that this particular model number of load center is invertible. All the circuit breakers, including a main circuit breaker, if it's added later, turn on and off sideways. The main descriptive sticker is installed sideways on the back of the panel door. One huge area to concentrate on will be grounding. Contestants will need to know the difference between a GEC which is a grounding electrode conductor and an EGC or equipment grounding conductor. I have a video on this subject, which I'll link to in my video description. In the video, I give you definitions of EGCs and GECs. So here's a couple of little clips from the video showing you what a GEC is. See this green wire right here? That is a grounding electrode conductor or GEC. And this is exhibit 250.31 from the 2020 NEC handbook. And it says exhibit 250.31 shows a listed water pipe ground clamp. That's right here, the ground clamp, generally used with eight AWG through four AWG grounding electrode conductors, GECs. So there you go. That's a simple example of a GEC. And here we have another example of grounding electrode conductors. Then I go over the definition of EGC and I won't go through the whole video, but I want to put out one very important point. This is 2020 NEC 250.118 types of EGCs. 
Now go down there to number four. Number four, electrical metallic tubing. So that is a type of equipment grounding conductor. This is a very important point in the contest last year. And so I just wanted to make sure I pointed out. But I'll put a link for this video in the video description. Contestants will need to know in which panel the neutral and ground are to be bonded. And how does this bonding take place? I'll link to Sparky Channel videos on both of these subjects. This is a Siemens 200 amp, 30 space, main lug, indoor load center with copper bus. Main lug only load centers are typically applied downstream of a main circuit breaker panel and they can be used as a sub panel. For main lug only load centers, the incoming cables are terminated on the line side of the lugs that are attached directly to the bus. No main overcurrent device exists within a main lug only load center. From now on, I'll call this panel the MLO, which stands for main lug only. The MLO has dual neutral bars and two ground bars. The neutral bars and the ground bars are separate unless this green bonding screw is screwed all the way in. All of the terminals in panels need to be torqued. One tip is that when torquing down breaker terminals, the torque specs can be found on the breakers themselves. This is a very important point because I have seen contestants getting very upset that they haven't been given the torque specifications. They just need to know that they are written on the breaker. I have a whole video on this subject, which I'll link to in my video description. One new contest that we've seen in the most recent championship is the violation board. In this contest, contestants are asked to find the NEC violations on this board. I have several videos which carefully go over this contest. I'll link to videos on this subject. Here are some circuit breakers in the main panel. This circuit breaker is 15 amps. This one is 15 amps. This one is 20 amps. And this one is 20 amps. Now let's look at the wires going to these circuit breakers. Notice this one is thicker than these other three. Well, this is a 12 gauge wire. This is a 14 gauge wire. This is a 14 gauge wire. And this is a 14 gauge wire. Now this 14 gauge hot wire goes to this circuit breaker, which is a 15 amp circuit breaker. So that's correct. And it's nicely installed. Not too much copper showing. This blue 14 gauge hot wire is going to a 15 amp breaker. It's nicely installed. That's excellent. This 14 gauge wire is going to a 20 amp circuit breaker. Now that's not correct. A 20 amp circuit breaker should have the, the thicker wire. You see how this is thicker than the other three? This is 12 gauge wire. Okay, so this is incorrect. We've got a 14 gauge wire going to a 20 amp circuit breaker. So this is a code violation right here. And the other thing is that this circuit breaker appears to be rather loose. Check to make sure that it's installed properly. Also, be sure to read the comments in the comment sections because there's a lot of very good discussion. If you're a contestant, all of your work will be checked out and graded by judges. So I hope that you guys take advantage of my videos so that you can experience the thrill of victory. Hope to see you in Tampa. In second place, taking home $20,000. Let's give a huge round of applause for Shock Therapy. Yeah.